Right, reality therapy. Um, reality therapy was created by a guy named William Glasser. And um, actually on your notes, I've got this section um, where um, the William Glasser Institute in America teaching the world choice therapy or theory. Um, so there's the website address for William Glasser. So you can go there and have a bit of a look on what they're doing. And um, it's a different thought, a different sort of therapy like the ones we used to, um, uh, where we um, focus a lot on here and now, but also with this one, it's like more active, involved with your client. Um, so I also have a um, reality therapy is a therapeutic approach that focuses on problem solving and made it making better choices in order to achieve specific goals. So problem solving, making better choices, specific goals. Um, I think, personally, I think this is quite a good one we can use with, with adolescents. Because of the, especially the one making better choices, because especially adolescents sometimes do not make better choices. Mm because they don't think about what they're doing. They don't think of consequences. So with this one is you sit when you talk to them and say, well, you've done it. What is a better choice? Um, maybe, if, maybe if there's an, a, a relationship issue in the home, uh, especially when they reach 17, um, when they're starting to, starting to form their own identity, um, there's conflict between mom and dad. Uh, mom and dad becomes the enemy in most cases because you don't want me to have fun. You don't want me to, you want me to do whatever you want me to do, that sort of stuff. Which is a normal process for a 17 year old anyway. So so if a kid goes into that phase, it's not, he's not really going, we not, I don't have this rebellious teenager and I failed as a parent. Um, it's basically a normal process. It's basically a normal way of, of, of how how it works um, in um, in uh, the, the world we live in. So if you, if you read those books, on, on raising children and raising boys, you'll find that this is a normal process. And I assume it's also the normal thing with girls. Um, no, I personally <laughs> might be worse, yeah, I was, I was spared that because I only have boys. Um, although I must say boys can also be quite a challenging um, thing, especially towards the man in the house because suddenly they want to dethrone dad and they want to be the alpha male. So there's always a, a bit of a tug of war going on. And then when you have two boys, the one wants to show dominance over the other one. So with reality therapy, we look at what they're doing. We look at problem solving, but we also look at the fact of making choices, making better choices or making good choices. <coughs> so um, you would probably talk to them about what they've done um, and what's a better, what, what would have been a better choice. Um, you know, like, I was upset so I broke the window. What would have been a better thing to do? Uh, maybe kick the rugby ball, <laughs> that sort of stuff. So, okay. Um, using unsatisfactory or non-existent connections with people we need, we need are the source of almost all human problems. The goal of reality therapy is to help people reconnect. So it says that um, unsatisfactory or non-existent connections with people we meet, not need, but so we meet people and we have unsatisfactory or non-existent connections. So there's some stuff we work sometimes work with people and we can, cannot connect with them. Um, if you look into relationships, even um, sometimes even with your own children, you struggle with that connections. Um, I just can't connect with my kid. I can't connect with my 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 in-laws, or I can't connect. I can't connect with my cousin, or or I can't connect with people at work. I can't connect with my boss. I can't connect with my sister. There's all sorts of ways where we struggle to connect with people. Um, so it's either it says <coughs> it's unsatisfactory or it's non-existent. Can you think of an example of someone that you you don't have to please don't name names because it's being recorded. But is there anyone in your life which you struggle to connect with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the thing with all of us. 
there are people we struggle to connect with. Some people it's, it's like not really important that we don't connect with them because we don't really have much to do with them. Um, but some people it's like especially in the workplace or in in your That's family, one of your children, or, one of your children um, or one of your family members, um, which if you struggle to that, you can have really, really awkward Christmas and birthday parties, um, you know, and events when there's a family thing come get together. Um, sometimes you'll have a, a group sitting on that side and a group sitting on that side because we can't connect. So this is important that we actually get people connecting. Um, it's interesting, South Africa, had a, um, we have a mobile network called MTN and the network's logo was we connect people um so so you can become like mtn in your counseling room <laughs> and you can connect people so is reality therapy a group more of a group therapy or is it because you're saying you're helping people to reconnect so i'm I, just thinking i think if you the can other use person it. has no interest in connecting with the person you're working with yeah then skills teaching skills Okay. I would say if the other person, remember counseling is only successful or group counseling is only successful if both yes. parties want to yes. be there. Yeah. Um, so if you've got an issue with let's say Mary and Mary doesn't want to talk to you because Mary Mary is just Mary mm. um, and um, we can teach you skills how to connect with Mary so that your side is actually clean and positive. Okay. So that uh, not when like oh, oh damn yes Mary it's like and also the other fact is don't be fake. Yeah. It's like, oh Mary, you're so wonderful. And then Mary goes like, oh, I'm so thankful Mary just left. <laughs> um, because you that get it, that a lot though. You, you do get that, yeah. yeah. You get that, especially you in families. It's like, yeah. there's this one sister-in-law you can't cope with. And then when she, she actually <coughs> appears on the scene, everyone is like, oh, yeah. you're so great. You're such a great mother. You're so wonderful, 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 wonderful. And when she left, like, Oh, she's such a terrible mother. Yeah. <laughs> As I, uh, because people are fake. Yeah. Um, because that's how we connect with Mary, because we like to soothe her ego. Um. Um, but with reality therapy, it's like we're looking at solutions. We're looking at how can we connect with Mary, even if Mary is like this person which we really don't like. How can I connect with her? Almost like you said, Dr. Phil. Dr. Yeah. Phil challenges. So yeah. with reality therapy, there's a lot of challenging happening. Okay, so how does that work for you? Um, how does that work for you if you and your husband don't speak to each other for a week? I had a fight with my wife, I'm not talking to her. What would you do? The house might be silent, but it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. My dad did that. My sister actually got that from my dad. My sister is a champion of that. If, the, if, if, if ignoring people was Olympic sport, my, my sister would have won the gold medal. Mm. Um, I mean, she can go and ignoring you for a year. Oh, you know, it's like, yeah. I think if the, the record with my parents was a year, that she didn't speak to them or anything. And then one day she phones and everything is normal. She chats as if nothing happened. Um, it's like, um, that doesn't really work that well no. with me. Um, because you don't find me and think act, everything's normal. So, so what do you do? I mean, let's take solution for this problem. Um, my sister was upset with me. Okay, this is not for real. Um, my sister was upset with me. She understood me wrong. I said, are you coming over? And she, she realized that she thought I said, are you also coming over? Like, now she's upset because I obviously don't want her there. Mm. Um, now suddenly she ignores me for six months and she phones me one day. How do I solve this problem? Come on, you're all counsellors. I think, well, if that was me, I would pick up from where you left off. Mm -hmm. The phone call and say, look, I'm really sorry if you misunderstood what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is what I actually meant. Um, I, that's how I, yeah. Yeah, backtrack, yeah? Backtrack. Basic, um, effective communication skills, kind of like, sorry, this is what you took, but this is what I was trying to communicate, so yeah. you're getting your point across. Okay, so not ignoring the issue and continuing no. as nothing happened? That's or right. 
Okay. I would have ignored it. Hey? I would have ignored it. I'd just carry on. Look, if they've made the overture, you think, well, you know, all right, she's over, let's get past it. Okay. Just, I'm going to be that way too. You'll be that way too. I would make sure, I would never let it go that far. Yeah. You know, I would have to sort of intervene myself and you say, well, yeah, let's fix this. That. Okay. What went wrong? You know, so, so sit you, down together. Yeah. You wouldn't have allowed six months to, to no, pause. No, you would have, no. You would have phoned. Yes, yes. All right, okay. I had a situation a while ago. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just get you this. Um, this couple came to church. Um, we we pastored the church, uh, and the first time we met, it's people we know come to church. The church have a lovely coffee shop. We spent <coughs> after church service we had coffee with them, had a bit of a chat, coffee with them, great. The next Sunday they came, met them at the door. They said they'll be having coffee. We said yes. We had coffee with them. Third Sunday they came. We didn't have coffee with them. We had coffee with other church members. Because that's our role. We yes. can't. I mean, if you are pastoring the church, you can't just no. pastor two people. No. You have to have coffee with other people too. Yes. So they left. We went home. I looked on Facebook, and the guy wrote on Facebook, "Funny that one week people see you, and next week they totally ignore you." And, and that was their interpretation. Yeah, yeah. So I found the guy. So what do I do? Do I leave it or do I phone him? So oh I phone no, him. Yeah. I confronted. I said, "Listen, um, I just want, I saw your post. Has it got to do with me?" And it's like, "Yes, because you just ignored me." I said, "No, I didn't ignore you. I greeted you friendly, mm. but we we have to drink coffee with other people every week. It's not mm. just. Mm. I can't just form a clique with one or two people. Mm. Um, they obviously never came back. Um, we tried to restore the friendship because we were friends with them." But um, there's always this thing between us, um, because but there's nothing wrong from our side. We no, no. we weren't think that you could. we weren't even rude because we didn't know that they expected us to mm. because it was just they sort of expected us. You drink with us coffee every single yes. week. Yeah. Okay, so there there's one one issue that wasn't solved over coffee. It was actually caused by coffee. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they say coffee solves everything, yeah. but so when you asked us about what we would do, mm. is is everything is what we've said like well, a right way to do it? Well, it depends on you. I mean, mm. it's your reality. Mm. Yes, mm. it's your reality, and you know the person. Mm. Um, with my sister, it might be a better idea to just let it go. Mm -hmm. And just continue, like you said, continue as it is. Mm -hmm. um, with other people, it's it's better to backtrack, mm -hmm. because if I backtrack, I can actually solve the problem. Yeah. With my sister dear, I might just make it worse. Yes, I think sometimes you know, even when you let it go, like as I said, I, I would let it go until you got back on track. Then, when you are on track then you can bring it up later when you're in a comfortable yeah. you're in a more comfortable position. Yeah. If you bring it up straight away mm, and say oh you got the wrong end mm. of the stick, mm. yes, that yeah. they might it might just close that door yeah. that they've opened. Yeah. Even so with hostility yeah. you can do the wrong thing, you know, mm. you do need yeah. to you know because it's about it's a sense yeah. of connection. Yes. Yeah. It's about connection. Yeah. Right, so how do I connect with you? Okay. Mm. If I connect with you by addressing the issue Mm. Will I solve the issue? The, will I? Oh, will I make the connection? Will I break the connection even further? Right. For some people, you just need to let it go. Mm. Um, I know my sister's background. I know that's what she grew up in. Yeah. Um, that's how it is. Um, so we ignore you for six, seven months, and hopefully you struggle with you get hit with amnesia, and you don't know mm. what happened before, and we're friends like forever. Yeah. Um, so that sort of stuff. So we, our people are different. Each mm, one's absolutely. different. Um, each one works differently. Mm -hmm. Each one lives in a different thing. So mm. this is about human problems, mm. and one of the biggest human problems is connection. One of the biggest issues where people end up in marriage and relationship counselling is because of communication. Mm -hmm. yep. Money and communication are the two things that's mostly the problem with, with marriage breakdown. They don't communicate any, anymore, there's some issues. He starts looking around, she starts looking around. Mm -hmm. The neighbour looks very cute because he talks to me. There's communication, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So some of the main issues for us as people is communication. Mm -hmm. So we need to try and get connection. 
you need people connected. Even if you look at your own family, how would you connect with people? Um, even in church, the people that go to church, um, you sit you sit in a in a church where if you, uh, like I I came from a macro church where there were two two and a half thousand people in the service. Um, you can't connect with two and a half thousand people, no. but you can connect with one or two people. Mm. I'm now in a smaller one where there's about 120 people in the service, and still it's too many people to connect with. Mm -hmm. But you connect with a few people, mm -hmm. and um, reach out to people and so, so even in your own family. Let's say you've got a family gathering. Seventy people show up for your family gathering. You can't, it's impossible, you can't connect with all seventy. You never sit down. And, and sometimes you don't even know them. And you know, yeah. like there's really there's a few that you keep very mm. intimate or close with. Yeah, there's know, a few. There's a lot of them that are quite distant. Yeah, you yeah. can greet them, but yeah, how do you actually you don't yeah. really know anything. You don't about really them. know about them. So, no. so that's the issue. It's like mm. it's about connection. It's about mm. connecting people. Mm. And sometimes our connections is like distant people. It's not really your responsibility to, to actually connect with people at the side at your distant, but the close ones. The people you have to connect with, your your boss, your your yeah. fellow workers. Mm. I mean if you if you go to a workplace and you connect with your boss but you can't connect with everyone else, I don't think you can stay there very long. No. So you need to work on connection. Um, there's a great, great book. It's got nothing to do with, with reality therapy. Um, it's just, it's just an absolute classic. If you can get that book, read it, um, read it, read it, and read it, and read it in a very, very long period of time. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Oh, yeah. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That is a classic. Uh, yes, he's amazing. He's absolutely. Amazing. I think he passed away. Yeah. How to win friends, friends and, friends and influence yeah. people. Um, he's got so many. I took. I, I read that book, but it took me months. And what's his name again? Sorry. Dale Carnegie. He's brilliant. He's absolutely his work. That's the last name, but C A R N E G Y. You'll probably get it with the um, you know the more the academic type of books, the the self help books, that sort um, of stuff. But it's really, really a brilliant book okay. on, on people's skills. <coughs> okay, so um, yeah, get that. It will, it just it it just helps with communication. Um, so yeah, so we have to help people connect. Right to create a connection between people, the reality therapist, teacher, or manager will focus on the present and avoid discussing the past because all human problems are caused by unsatisfying present relationships. I don't agree with that. Okay, why not? Because sometimes it's not the present relationship, it's a build up of past things. Okay. That causes the breakdown. Yes. It's a build up. Yeah, okay. So how would you do that? Well then you need to go back. Okay, but we do the right. Yeah. <laughs> what with what with what therapy do you go back? Um, CBT narrative. C no, yeah, yeah. Narrative gestalt. Mm. All those therapies. So if this one is, we are now living in the present. Okay, so we focus. Boy, we know we don't we don't discuss the boss. So mm. my sister phones me after not talking to me for six months. Mm. I'm talking about now. Mm. Uh, like you guys said, I'll continue from where I'm going on. Mm. It's from a now thing. Okay. Mm. Um, although I would like to go back to the past because I, 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 I hold a grudge mm -hmm. but if I, I bring out the past the grudge will come out mm -hmm. well, so I need to mm -hmm. solve that grudge story okay. on a different way so yeah. we are actually focusing on what's happening now so would you solve um, the grudge you know yourself like although it may be yes. your sister that caused it you would have to I would to have come to, to terms I would have to come to move terms move on mm -hmm. go on yeah, yeah. don't worry yeah, about it yeah it's like yes mm -hmm. like it's like um, it's your problem. She's already moved on. She's moved yes. on. Yes. Mm. So it's yeah. sort of I keeping a debt, mm. yeah. which mm. she did something wrong, but I keep the debt for it. Mm. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. but I need to let go. Yes. I need. I need to move on. Yes. So, sir. so with this therapy, we are actually focusing on the present. Yeah. We're not going like, oh, 
you did this or you did that. We're focusing on the present. We're trying to connect. Okay. Avoid discussing symptoms and complaints as much as possible since they are the ways that countless choose to deal with unsatisfying relations. So we're talking about all the symptoms and all the things and, and we're getting nowhere. We are trying to focus on uh, building a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to focus on, oh, you did this wrong and you did that wrong. And mom, mom loved you more than she loved me and, and dad bought you a red bike and, and I actually wanted a red one but he bought me a pink one. That sort of stuff. It's so like you're, you're focusing on the positives. On the positives, on the now, what's happening now. How can I build a relationship? I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're back in my life. I'm so mm -hmm. glad you're here. Um, you know, you bless me by your presence. Uh, but please be genuine, okay? Don't lie about yeah, it. It's like, no. uh, don't say you bless me with your presence and it's like, oh, damn you. Yeah, okay. It's like, um, it's like, false, isn't it? don't be false, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Be real. Well, it's not going to work if you're false. No. It's not. No, be real. Okay, be real. Because we're trying to build relationships. We're yeah. trying to, to uh, deal with unsatisfying relationships and the stuff that's dragging us down. So we're trying to be positive and yeah. work with the person as they are. Um, understand the concept of total behavior, which means focus on what can counselors can do directly. Act and think. What can you do to build your relationship with your sister? So they're sitting in your room and said, oh, me and my sister, we don't get along and this and this. What can you, and then you ask them the question, what can you do? That's like a Dr. Full moment. Yeah. What can you do to fix the problem? Mm. But I hate my sister. Okay, that's fine. We know you hate your sister, but what can you do to fix it? Is there anything you enjoy doing together? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring out yeah. What what, yeah, like what, what, what can you do? Mm -hmm. But again, don't sit there and say like, why don't you two do a hobby together? No. Yeah, no. Because that's not our job. Our job is not to give advice. And, in, and maybe when you do that, they even fight more because they can't get along about the hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but what can you do with your sister? Mm -hmm. What do you okay. enjoy doing? So, what would you like to do? Yeah. And sometimes maybe it's probably, it, after you've talked about so much, I'll get your sister in. Have a, have a double session, a dual session. Um, understand the concept of total behavior, which means focus on what the counselor can do directly. Act and think. Spend less time on what they cannot do directly. I can't speak to her like this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't speak to my sister. Yes, you can speak to your sister. But my sister is far away. Do you have Skype? Yes. So you can Skype. Yeah. Dr. Foley is a bit, bit straightforward. And unless you can be a bit straightforward. Okay. Um, if they don't come back, then it's an issue. Remember, counselling is not fixing people. No. Counselling is creating a space where people can grow. And if they don't want to grow, then they, they have to go. Right? We are not there to fix them. We are there to help them grow. Like in Goodwill Hunting, how it's just direct and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're not begging your client. You don't beg your client to come back. I mean, you don't find your client. They can make an appointment. I don't, I don't make appointments immediately. Mm. I finish a session and they go. If, oh, they, okay. if, if they want to come and see me again, they can come and see me again. I'm not going to... If you, you want to make appointments, send me a text in the week and we can... But just be careful. I'm very busy. So, so if, you, if you wait too long, then you won't be able to see me next week. I had a few people that phoned me on a Saturday. Can I see you Sunday? Sorry, I'm full. Yeah. I'm full. That's like, I'm not, that, that, that's the amount of counseling I do. Sometimes you have to think of your own, own sanity too. Mm -hmm. fix. Sometimes I would have fitted someone in extra and then I, I realized, oh, I shouldn't have done the extra person in. Yeah. And sometimes so you know that right from you the know that. You, you know, know that. You just do it because you feel yeah. obligated or something, yeah. don't you? Yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes regret. Yeah. And also sometimes people will say, to you, I have to speak to you now. Uh, unless it's suicidal and then you refer them to some suicide line. But to be honest, some people have been dealing with that problem now for years. They can wait a week longer. Yes. You know? They can wait. It, it's not going to go away. I mean, how long have you been struggling with this? Oh, seven years. Okay. Make it seven years in a week. We'll solve it next week. Okay. That's what I learned from a guy um, 
uh, in South Africa is a really good psychologist, and he said that um, if people find find you don't jump in your car at midnight and go and see them because they they have an uh, issue. Mm. Um, there are people. There are there are land lines and stuff about. It. Remem remember, you are running a business too, mm. and um, if you're a welfare organisation and and you work for somebody that's on 24 hour or whatever call, a different story, but you're running on practice, they can actually wait. Or you can have a few numbers, like on your mobile, in case of emergency, yes. phone, phone Lifeline, or phone this yeah. one, or phone that that's one, true. you know, um, you don't need to um, be responsible. Mm -hmm. Remember, we, can't, we cannot save everyone, that's right. but we can help them, we guide them, we, we, we with them, okay? We journey with our clients, um, but sometimes you need to be harsh, and I sound terribly harsh now, but that's not um, what I intend to sound like, it's just that you need to look after yourself too, okay, and um, there's no one, like if you, like even if you get a call from someone who is really, really in a bad state, um, maybe aggression, something like that, you women alone, you get a call 12 o'clock at night, you need to go there. Um, what are you going to walk into? Mm -hmm. So, so that's why you need phone the police or phone the, yeah. you know, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's uh, just you need to take care of yourself too because you don't want to be attacked. Um, that sort of self care. Self care is very important. Mm -hmm. um, you might help one person, they might attack you, and you end up in hospital and you start getting anxiety and all sorts of stuff, and you can't help other people. So you need to look after yourself, take care of yourself. All right, now back to reality therapy. Um, you can, okay, change the feelings and philosophy. Feelings and ph physiologic can be changed, but only if there's a change in the acting and thinking. CBT, CBT acting and thinking. So we need to actually speak to them about how they, how they think, what they think, what they think about the other person. Um, why don't you like the other person? Why can't you connect with the other person? Maybe, maybe that's something that you need to actually flesh out. Uh, grab your whiteboard. Okay, this is Peter. Why can't you connect with Peter? Because Peter is the, the, the. Give the... Give them the opportunity to give you all the information about Peter. Why can't they connect? And then you can challenge them all sort of about the whole thing about... Okay, so why do you... How would you cope with this? How would you, so it's a whole process of actually dissecting all feelings and emotions. It's not about the past. It's not about what did Peter do years ago. But if Peter walks in now, how will you cope? It's the reality. It's not about the past or my mom did this when I was seven. And because my mom did that when I was seven, I struggle to work with women that's older than 10. Okay? It's not that issue. It's about... I cannot connect with Peter. Why can't I connect with Peter? This is who I am. Okay, so that's um, that's a bit of here and now. And there's sometimes the sort of therapy people don't like to hear. Mm. Because with this one, we're focusing on... It's upfront in your yeah, face. It's upfront in face. It's like, mm. you are here, Peter is here, why can't you? What's wrong with you? And then we are looking at you and why you can't connect with Peter because you need to change to be able to connect with him. He's not going to change because he doesn't even know you've got issues with him. He might feel it because you like give him the cold shoulder. But your job here in counseling with, with this is we need to find out what's your problem. L a lovely Dr. Full moment here happening. <laughs> and the client might not like you as mm. much as they would like you if you do PCT and mm. oh that's okay I love you mm. uh, this is a bit where we take the gloves off mm. avoid criticizing blaming complaining and help counselee to do the same okay so you're not going to sit there and they're going to sort of blame and criticize and complain and then you said yeah yeah I understand yeah 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 this sort of people are so and this avoid those sort of stuff okay listen to them but again, by doing this, they learn to avoid some extreme harmful external control behaviors that destroy relationships. Okay, so we're not going to allow them to criticize and blame and complain. Okay, they're going to tell you what they do, and we're going to work with that. But you're not going to sit there and say, "Yes, I hate it when people do that too." You know, you know, I hate it. If 
You know, like you're sitting in a meeting and someone sits in and they chew a peppermint and they actually chew it so loud. That's really, really, I can't stand that. And then they're like, we've got like this whole smashing poor Peter session because Peter chews his, his, his mints. Um, we need to ask you, okay, how are you going to cope with this? We, we're not going to like talk with our client and work through this stuff and criticize old Peter and, 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 and blame him because of the fact. You're actually working on a strategy with your client. So, is it possible for you to try and just ignore it? <coughs> is it possible for you to tell yourself this meeting only lasts an hour, um, then it will be over? Is it possible for you to sit somewhere else? Make sure you don't sit next to Peter. <laughs> there's a guy in gym, when I, the gym I go to, there's a guy in gym who really, really needs to learn that there's a, there's something on the market called deodorant. Okay, this guy really doesn't know this. There's a thing called deodorant. So, what do I do? Do I walk up to him and say to him, here's deodorant for you? Because do you really, really smell bad? Or do I just make sure that I avoid him? Well, actually, if he's training on this side of the gym, I go to the other side. Yeah, that's it. So that's what I do. I avoid him. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so it's like I can either make him very upset, mm -hmm. and yes. I don't know if this guy's on steroids anyway, and then he goes <laughs> get roid right and, and slap me around when I say, did use deodorant. Yes. The other side is this guy might have a really bad allergic reaction to deodorant, yes. so he might not even be able to use it. <laughs> so I'm judging him. Mm -hmm. So the best way for me to avoid the situation is actually just avoid the situation. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do the same with your client. Mm -hmm try and work on strategies how they can actually solve this problem. Peter likes to chew his peppermints. Who, who puts out the peppermints? I do. <laughs> okay, great. Can you perhaps change the peppermints to minties? Which is softer. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Do something. Change something. What can you do? And we know of what we learned of the Z model and, and the decision balance and that stuff. There are certain things we can do nothing about and we just have to accept it. Right, teach counselees that legitimate to be le legitimate, blah, <laughs> legitimate or not, excuses stand directly in the way of them making needed connections. So, excuses stand in the way. So, don't make excuses. I don't like this, I don't like that. Excuses, excuses, be genuine, okay? Be genuine. Counselees must learn to be genuine. We live in a world that's not genuine. We live in the world of the Kardashians. We live in a world where we see stuff on TV that's not the reality. We have to get people to know that everything is not absolutely roses and whatever. I mean, even if you go to work, I mean, there's no real, real perfect place to go to work to. Every place has their flaws, although they say the number one place where people want to go and work is at Google, and then the number two place people want to work at is Virgin. Um, I've worked at Virgin. Uh, Virgin's a great company. It's one of the best companies, the best places I've ever worked, but there were flaws. Um, so, so every company's got some issues. Um, so just stop making excuses and just accept what's going on. It's like with me, I love gardening, but it may be strenuous work and I may get cut up doing things like it's spiky plants and stuff, but that's not going to divert me from doing it. No. Or something I love. That's part of your job. Okay, that's part of your job. Um, counseling is our job. Um, if you struggle with people with issues, you might not want to do this job because this is what we do. We will listen to people's issues and problems. That is counseling. Um, yeah, so. If you hate computers, don't go and study computers. <laughs> it's so easy. Your life will be easier. Right. Focus on specifics. Find out as soon as possible what counselors are disconnected from and work to help them choose reconnecting behavior. So what disconnects people? What disconnect me from you? Okay, so why can't you communicate with Peter? Why can't you communicate with him? Uh, because Peter thinks too much of himself. Do, do you know that? No, I just, it looks like it. Okay, so it looks like Peter connect. You know, so find something good in Peter, which you can actually focus on. Find something you can actually connect with. And this is not 
easy. It's not easy. I mean, even if your personal life, if you you really try to, to accept someone, I mean, your daughter comes home with this boyfriend, and you know this guy is bad news. And the more you tell your daughter he's bad news, the more in love she gets. So I heard of someone else that once said that her daughter's boyfriend is bad news, so she took a photo of his of him and put it in the freezer. <laughs> and then the relationship broke up, so she believes that every time you put a photo of the other person in the freezer, the relationship will work. So I'm just checking to see, I wonder when my kids have uh, girlfriends, yeah, I'm going to try that one out. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it will not be necessary, but okay. So, but, but find, find common ground, find yeah. stuff that work, find ways to reconnect. Mm. Even if there's a reconnection needed between a husband and wife. I mean, I'm, I'm just focusing on work and outside world, but we can also get this in house. In the house, like a couple have been married for 40 years, 45 years. They retire. Suddenly, there's no reconnection. There's no connection because suddenly he's home, she's home, whole day. We have nothing to talk about. It's under her feet. My mom said when my dad retired, she said every time she turns around, she falls over him. <laughs> Because he's just following, following her everywhere, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, in the end, my dad went back and back to work <laughs> because because he, he, he had nothing to do. Um, so there needs to be a reconnection. So you need to talk about what's going to. How are you going to reconnect? So if if she says like, oh, if I turn around, I just keep on falling over him. What can you do to help solve that problem? Give him something to do. Give him something to do. Give her something to do. Do something. And to say, do, yeah, and to say, oh, great, you can do stuff together. That will not always work. Okay, it's not always. So, so what can work? What can't work? Work on that. Okay, you need to work about reconnection. This therapy is about connecting. It's not so much as solving the issues. We talk about problem solving, but the problem we are trying to solve is the connection. People need space, yeah. Guys need me time. I mean, we are the only only creatures that can actually sit and not think of anything. It's a proven fact yeah. that men can sit oh, and not think. I was going to say, I thought not do that. I was about to he was talking about the human kind. Yeah. No. Men can think, can sit and not think about anything. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest conflicts when and my, my starting of my marriage with my wife was, she'll ask me what do you think about it, and it's like, nothing. I think about nothing, and it's like it's impossible. It is possible. I'm mad. Men can not. We can do that. We can stare at the TV and not even think about what's happening on the TV. We have that ability. Women don't have that ability. So, and that's why women struggle to understand that we can actually not think of anything. Unbelievable. So yeah, it's a, it's and it's a, it's it's a scientific fact. So it's like it's yeah. Um, understanding men and women. Um, look at Mark Gongor's work. Mark Gongor um, on YouTube. There's one that he does, the man brain, woman brain. Um, it's hilarious. He's absolute. He, he, he's he's really really funny. He's a Christian guy, but he is extremely funny. How he explains how the woman's brain and the man's brain differ, and um, you understand yourself a bit more, and you'll understand your spouse a bit more. If you, watch, if you watch, watch it together, watch, then. yeah, watch, <laughs> no, watch it together because he explains both yeah. together. It, it's really, it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, so, and he also explains that we can actually, men can actually not, we can switch off our thinking, and we can, we, we can breathe, we can do everything, but we can stop thinking, <laughs> and then, oh, and then you, women interrupt our non-thinking moment and ask women. us what are you thinking about and then it's, it's like nothing and it's like you're lying to me yeah. it's impossible oh, exactly that is so true and also yeah. watching tv or something you know the ad will come on well my mind is going somewhere else about what i'm doing tomorrow or doing tonight or whatever like this and so she says why did you get that ad i said oh, no, i didn't even watch the ad no. it was an on yeah. so <laughs> i'm thinking oh how can you just have nothing else to do but watch tv <laughs> yes. Oh, that's I was awesome. watching this thing the other day. It was talking about men and women, the like love, sex, marriage stuff. 
and it was saying how women feel what men are saying because of how men just don't, they can switch off. Yeah. And that switch, the one communication problem is they're not saying what, with enough conviction so that a woman isn't feeling what they're saying, which of course is a problem and stuff Yeah, like that. and the longer you're married, the more you understand each other anyway. Because you can finish each other's sentences. Yes. Yeah. You can literally finish each other's yeah. sentences. Yes. Or think what they think. Yeah, think yeah. what they yeah. think. Yeah. The longer you are married, um, the more you can be able to, you are able to do that. Um, so, help them make specific workable plans to reconnect with people. Right. So you help them to make specific plans. How are you going to reconnect with Peter? Or okay, you haven't spoken to your sister in a while. How are you going to reconnect with your sister? You haven't spoken to your child in a while. How do you, are you going to reconnect? So it's about connection, okay? It's about, I'm not talking about the problems. I'm not talking about the issues. I'm not talking about the past. I'm talking about connection. How are you going to reconnect? Okay, some people have different ways of connecting. Um, in the modern world, I've got a, I've got a, I've got an interesting guy. It's my, um, my son, my, my son and my aunt and his aunt have an issue and he unfriended her on Facebook <coughs> and um, she he then sent a friend request again but she didn't accept the friend request now according to him it's like she doesn't want anything to do with him but because he lives in the modern world where we are cyber mm. where he still doesn't realize that connection is people mm. So if I've got an issue of you, I actually have to sort the issue. Uh, pressing a button like and unlike <laughs> is not sorting it. But in the modern world, for the modern child, child this is how we connect. And sometimes we need to do a bit of, bit of more education and say to them, listen, <laughs> you need to find your own or send her a text or send her something. But pressing a button and saying, connect is not connecting. So, so you will have clients that will come in and say, but I sent them a, a friend request. Mm. Uh, mm. Maybe, maybe they don't even go on Facebook, that sort of stuff, you know. It's like, so yes, they don't like me. He, he literally said she doesn't want anything to do with me because she didn't accept my friend request. Mm. Yep, that's how he sees it. That's how, and and, yeah. and 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 that's nothing. Uh, that's how he sees it, and that's yeah. and I'm sure if I if I go out and I, I have a survey and ask young people, and they will say that. Mm. That's his like. I'd be surprised. A yeah. lot of even older people get very upset over things like that. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Thankful they've got that new thing now where you don't have to unfriend them; you can unfollow them. Yes, oh, yes. So, 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 yes. so you still stay oh, friends, but, but they don't. don't but you don't see anything <laughs> of them anymore. Yeah. It's like, so I think I think there were there must be a reason why they did that because yes. people obviously became into like too much of a problem. Yeah, yeah. So wow. okay, so be patient and supportive, but keep focusing on the source of the problem. Okay, the source of the problem. How do we connect? How am I going to let you connect? My my connection is I can't connect with him because. We have nothing in common. We have nothing in common to talk about. Mm. Okay. Um, my problem with my son, I'm getting a bit personal here today, uh, but I've, we adopted both our kids. And the eldest was very into cars. All sorts of cars. That's the last thing that I'm into. If my car can take me to point A, point B, and maybe point C, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Right? What I know about my car is I know where, where to check the oil, the water, and put petrol in, and I know where's the battery. That's what I know about my car. My son is uh, anything. You'll drive past, you'll say, that's the car, it costs so much, it's that, that's that model, it's that here. It, it's like, the way for me to connect with him was to become interested in cars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had to actually step out of my comfort zone yeah. and I had to go to car shows and I had to actually become excited and actually my son loves it when when I've got an off day we go to car places yeah. like Porsche oh. and we dress up very smart 
and we act if we want to buy Porsches. <laughs> so it's like, mm, this is a nice one, and blah, blah, blah. So, so yeah, yeah. So we've got this whole yeah. whole thing, yeah. And then, um, that's and pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You yeah. like acting, and then they send you these great brochures and whatever, whatever. One day we'll buy a Porsche. Yeah, well, uh, they say we the more you think about it, yeah. the more you visualize yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my my life philosophy as a, as a, as a student was, I'd rather. I thought I'd rather cry in my Porsche than laugh in my Volkswagen. <laughs> um, <laughs> my philosophy changed over here, but but this is how I connect with him. It's like we go, we we actually talk to the salespeople. We like we'll go. Here's my number. Yeah. I actually give them my right number. Yeah. Here's my number. We'll think about it. So and that's how we connect. And it's like those are the days that he remembers most. Yes. It's like you know, Dad. It's fun. It's fun. Really yeah, yeah. Mom, we went to the Porsche shop, and Dad. And we, we choose one and we go to this one and we like yeah. put everything there and open everything and check everything <laughs> out. Even take it for a test drive and whatever. And it's like, mm, it's a nice car or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes I'll phone back and say, no, sorry, I, I went to Ferrari. I bought a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's just, it, that's yes. how I connected. So mm. to solve my problem with connection, mm. We did this, okay? Because yeah. and, and it's also it sounds like you're enjoying it too. So it's something you would never have done before. You, it was I some, I sometimes do enjoy it, but I would. I promise you, I'd rather be home. <laughs> but but it's it's something I have to do. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. something I have to do to connect. Yes. Okay. So yeah. my problem was that he's different. Yes. He lives in a different world, yeah. and yeah. I I couldn't force him into my world. No. Because my world is a bit more boring. My world is more academic mm. and that sort of stuff, and his world is more like everything it's about cars. Yeah. So I had to step out of my comfort zone and mm. I had to move into his world. Mm. But if you're forcing somebody into your world anyway, it wouldn't work. It will not but work. No, it would be a forced, yeah. a forced yeah. relationship. A yes, forced but this is what this is about. It's mm. not changing the other person. No. Yeah. It's yeah. you connecting with the other yeah. person. Yeah. So I had to do stuff to connect. And it's if you want to connect. Yeah, I had to connect, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. so it's like if you and your let's go back to me and my sister story. Mm -hmm. If you and your sister wants to connect, okay, why don't you take the first step by sending her a text message mm -hmm. or just hi, I was thinking about you, yeah. how are you doing, that sort of stuff, okay? But she doesn't. She sends. She never texts me, mm -hmm. okay? That's fine. No blaming. Yeah. We said earlier, we don't blame, we don't accuse, we don't do that. You take action. So, okay, your sister never texts you, but why don't you text her? Yeah, exactly. Text her, even if she doesn't answer you, just text her and say, Hi, I was thinking about you, I hope you're having a good day, or whatever. It's not about what you're getting out of the relationship, it's what you're giving into yeah. this relationship. So, it's about action, mm -hmm. it's about facing the reality, building connection, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I once I read an interesting story about um, this one woman in a church. She they got a new new reverend, and she went to him and she said to him, "You know, this is a terrible church. I've been in this church now for ten years, and no one in this church ever invited me for coffee." And then he said to her, "Did you ever invite someone?" And she said, "No." He says, "Well, you can't expect people to invite you for coffee if you don't invite people for coffee." It's a bit like the respect thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get respect if you don't show. show respect, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. there's an issue, if you like, instead of saying that, oh, my sister never phones me, or my brother never phones me, or, mm. or whatever, mm. why don't you just break that cycle mm. and you do that? Even if they don't phone back, mm. right? Persistence pays off, mm. and that's what we need to teach our clients. Key concept, main focus is on what clients are doing and how to get them to evaluate whether their present actions are working. So, you sitting at home waiting for your sister to phone you and complaining that she never phoned you, is that working for you, yes or no? And then, when she phoned you, it's like, you know, it's been like six months since you phoned me. Just say, hi, hey, it's so great to hear from you. It's like, but, what can you do differently? I can perhaps phone her. Stop being so stingy and phone her. People are mainly motivated to satisfy their needs, especially the need for significant relationships. People want significant relationships. We are relational people. 
although we're living in a world which is getting more, people are getting lonelier and lonelier and lonelier. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this is the world we live in. So, but um, we can get them to, to reach out. Reach out. And reach out, I mean not start reaching out on Messenger. Because some of us have like 2,000 friends, but we have n we've never met one of them. Rejects the medical model, the notion to, of transference and unconscious and dwelling in one's past thing. Um, we reject that. We're trying to live in the now by saying, you know, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to build relationships. I'm going to, whatever the things of the past happens, um, you know, tran the transparency thing is like I'm looking for a father figure because my father wasn't present, all those things. In this therapy, we ignore those things and we're focusing on now. How do I build relationships now? How do I build a relationship with Peter at work? How do I build a relationship with my sister, my mother, uh, my brother, people that, that I just stopped communicating with? where there was break breakdown, okay? Um, we are there, the goal is to help people become more effective in meeting all their psychological needs, the able client to get, to, to get reconnected with people they have chosen to put into their, their world. So we want them to reconnect, okay? Reconnect with people. It's all about connection. Um, Techniques, active, directive therapy, so we are active and directive. Directive is like, okay, I want you to find your sister today. That sort of stuff. You can even be more directive and say, I want you to find your sister now. You can be directive, okay? This is a directive therapy. Dr. Phil, yeah. what's wrong with phoning her now? Mm. That sort of stuff. Um, skillful questioning. Okay, we question them, how is that working for you, how is this, whatever. Various techniques may use to help clients evaluate what they are presently doing to see if they are willing to change. If clients decide that their present behavior is not effective, they develop a specific plan for change and make a commitment to follow through. So what you're doing now isn't actually working for you, is it? Okay, it's not working for you, what can you do? And work out a plan how we can change that. Okay. This is again on the client and on now. Not on what happened in the past, not on what happened, what people did in the past, not the fact that they were bullied at school, not the fact that they had a horrible biology, biology teacher, not the fact that, that they, um, they didn't have lunch for, for six months because mom never packed them lunch. This is about what can you do now to build relationships now. Okay, primary goals is our goal is to help clients find better ways to fulfill their needs. Need is for connecting. Uh, practice reality therapy will often come in contact with clients who may come to therapy involuntary. Okay, so you'll have, sometimes you'll have clients who come to therapy who's, who doesn't want to be there. Okay, so involuntary. These clients may actively resist the process. So with those sort of clients, you are really directive. Um, talking about school kids being sent to you because they are always arguing with everyone else. I can't stand him, I can't cope with him, I can't that, I can't that. So they come to you because they are forced. Mm -hmm. Or people with relationship issues at work, maybe aggressive issues, fight with people at work, that sort of stuff, they are sent to you for counselling. Um, reality therapy focus on personal responsibility. So what's your responsibility in this? Your responsibility in this relationship, your responsibility in this action, that sort of stuff. Okay, there's a very, very bad relationship grill, grit, the four areas people fall into, the walled off, uh, which is this indifference, they get passive aggressive, and they feel like they're not worthy. Not they're not worthy, you're not worthy. So I'm passive aggressive towards you, and you're not worthy to be my friend. Then we get the, the part where the person starts to withdraw. Um, resignation, withdrawal, depressed. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be part of this. The people are horrible to me. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. Um, this is the worst place to work in. It's like, so they, they fall into that c category. Then you get people who's there, boundaryless and one up, control and anger. They become controlling and they become angry people. And then you get the ones that's desperate and manipulate. 
So if you look at this, you can sometimes see where your client is actually. What did I do? How did I feel? Some of our clients are very manipulating because they don't have relationships. It's all about relationship. This one is connecting. This theory of therapy is about connecting. So you can read more about this. You can read more about um, there's quite a lot of stuff on it. So that's the end of, of reality, a bit of an introduction to reality therapy. Um, so yeah, so enjoy that.